mm. both you and and uh, Elon think that with AI you're summoning demons, summoning a demon. Maybe not in those poetic terms, mm. but well, the, poten potentially. I mean, so potentially. Uh, two very, three very parsimonious assumptions. I think e any of which could be wrong, but uh, it just it seems like the the weight of the the evidence is on their side. One is that it's, it comes back to this topic of, of substrate independence, right? Anyone who's in the business of producing intelligent machines must believe ultimately that there's nothing magical about having a computer made of meat. You can do this in the kinds of you know, materials we're, we're using now, and uh, there's no special something that's good that, 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 that presents a, a, a real impediment to producing human level intelligence in silico, right? Again, an assumption, I, there, I'm sure there are a few people who still think there is something magical about you know, biological systems, mm -hmm. but um, leave that aside. Given that assumption, and given the assumption that we just continue making incremental progress, doesn't have to be Moore's law, it just has to be progress, that just doesn't stop. At a certain point, we'll get to the to human level intelligence and beyond and human level intelligence i think is also clearly a mirage because anything that's human level is going to be superhuman by unless we decide to dumb it down right i mean we, my phone is already superhuman as a calculator right so why would we make the human level ai you know just as good as me as a calculator um so i think we'll we'll very if we continue to make progress we will be in the presence of superhuman competence for any act of intelligence or cognition that we care to prioritize. It's not to say that we're, we will we'll create everything that a human could do. Maybe we'll leave certain things out. But anything that we care about, and we care about a lot, uh, and we certainly care about anything that, that produces a lot of power, you know, that we care about scientific insights and, and an ability to produce new technology and all of that. Um, we'll have something that's superhuman. And then the, the final assumption is just that there have to be ways to do that that are not aligned with a, a happy coexistence with these now more powerful entities than ourselves. So and and I would I would guess, and this is a you know kind of a rider to that assumption, there are probably more ways to do it badly than to do it perfectly. Uh, that is perfectly aligned with our well-being. And when you think about the consequences of, uh, of non-alignment, when you think about you're now in the presence of something that is more intelligent than you are, right? Which is to say more competent, right? Unless you've, and, and, and obviously there, there, there are cartoon pictures of this where we could just, you know, this is just an off switch. We could just turn off the off switch or they're tethered to something that, that makes them, you know, our slaves, in perpetuity, even though they're more intelligent, but that that strike those scenarios strike me as a failure to imagine what is actually entailed by greater intelligence. Right. So if you if you imagine something that's legitimately more intelligent than you are, and you're now in relationship to it, right? You're in the presence of this thing, and it is autonomous in all kinds of ways because it had to be to be more intelligent than you are. I mean, you built it to be to be all of those things. We just can't find ourselves in a negotiation with something more intelligent than we are, you know. And we can't. So we we have to have found the 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 subset of ways to build this these machines that are that are perpetually amenable to our saying, "Oh, that's not what we meant. That's not what we intended. Could you stop doing that? Just come back over here and do this thing that we actually want." And for them to care, for them to be tethered to our own sense of our own well-being, uh, such that, you know, I mean, their utility function is, you know, their their primary utility function is for is to, you know, this is I think Stuart Russell's, uh, you know, cartoon uh, plan is to figure out how to to tether them to a utility function that that has our own estimation of what's going to improve our well-being as its master you know re reward right so it's like that all that this this thing can get as intelligent as it can get 
but it, it only ever really wants to figure out how to make our lives better by our own view of better. Now, not, not to say there wouldn't be a conversation about, you know, I mean, because there's all kinds of things we're not seeing clearly about what what is better. In, in, and if we were in the presence of a genie or an oracle that could really tell us what is better, well, then we, sh- we presumably would want to hear that and we would modify our sense of, of, of uh, what to do next in conversation with these with these uh, minds. But I just feel like it is a failure of imagination being in relationship in relationship to something more intelligent than yourself isn't in most cases a circumstance of real peril so, because it, because it is in, in every like just to think of think of how everything on earth has to if if they, if they could think about their relationship to us if birds could think about what we're doing right they would the bottom line is they're always in danger of our discovering that there's something we care about more than birds, right? Or there's something we want that disregards the the, the well-being of birds, yeah. and and you know obviously much of our behavior is inscrutable to them. Occasionally we pay attention to them, and occasion occasionally we withdraw our attention, and occasionally we just kill them all for reasons they can't possibly understand, but. We're, if we're building something more intelligent than ourselves, by definition, we're building something whose horizons of value and and cognition can exceed our own, and and in ways where we can't necessarily foresee again perpetually that they don't just wake up one day and decide, okay, well, these these humans need to disappear. 